Well, the Bible calls, he has a good question, what is the worst sin? Uh, now one, thank you for acknowledging that some sins are worse than others. Uh, the most, you know, a very common thought on college campus is that all sins are equal and the Bible never says that. Now the one unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's the unforgivable sin. So you die never having uh, enacted uh, or received the calling of the Holy Spirit to turn from your sin and trust in Christ. There's no going back from that. Uh, I would probably put homosexuality very high on the list because God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah for their sin. I don't remember, I don't remember any cities being, uh, being destroyed with fire and brimstone for lies or for uh, theft uh, or, for, uh, or for even fornication. But God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone because it says their sin was very grievous and God calls homosexuality a vile affection. Now did you have a particular sin? Did you have a particular sin you wanted to talk about, young man? Did you have a particular sin you wanted to talk about, young man? With the skateboard, did you have a particular sin that you thought was the was the worst? Oh no, I think they're all equal. I think that if um, I think we're all tainted by sin, so like like we see it as like a scale. Like some of us have more crap to deal with than. No, you're the cause of your own sin. You're not going to be able to blame Adam and Eve on Judgment Day. You're not going to be able to blame your sin or your flesh or uh, something in your body. No, 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 no. Sin is an action. Sin is a free will choice that you make knowing right from wrong, knowing what God demands of you, and choosing, choosing the temporary gratification of sin over obedience to a holy and righteous God. Every single sin could be avoided. And the Bible never says that all sins are equal. In fact, even Jesus himself told Pontius Pilate, uh, he told, Jesus told Pontius Pilate that the ones, the Jews who gave him over to Pontius Pilate to be condemned by him were guilty of the greater sin. Again, uh, homosexuality, that was, uh, they were destroyed with fire and brimstone, but I don't remember any, uh, any uh, jewel thieves being destroyed with fire and brimstone in entire cities or regions. About, about five minutes and let's correct? switch. Hold on a second. Correct? Yeah. Uh, I didn't even hear your question. I was... I believe that wrath is a deadly sin, correct? That what? Wrath is a deadly sin, correct? Wrath is a deadly sin? Yes. yes. Why uh, keep mentioning wrath. God's wrath and his anger? No, wrath is not a deadly sin. God, God is going to have wrath. God has wrath. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. I mean, Judgment Day, Judgment Day, God's going to pour out His wrath. The Bible says that the cup of God's wrath and indignation will be poured out full strength without mixture. Uh, God, God has the most wrath. We haven't even seen, we, you know, God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. And that's probably about a cigarette lighter full of God's wrath. Yep. And then God, God destroyed the entire globe in the days of Noah, except for eight people and an ark of animals. And that's probably about a teaspoon. Noah's, the flood of Noah was probably about a teaspoon full of God's wrath. But in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that God's cup of wrath and indignation will be poured out. I see your hand. Will be poured out full strength without mixture one day. We have never seen God's strength, uh, God's wrath poured out full strength. All right. Let me set the ground rules here for the question and answer session. Uh, one, one, uh, you'll be first. You'll be first. I guarantee it. Uh, question and answer session rules. One, I am under no obligation to take any questions whatsoever, so I can end it at any time. Two, it must be a question, not a rambling statement or comment or opinion about how we're doing it wrong. Uh, number three, I'm only taking questions from sinners. So if you are living holy and obediently, if you're a Christian who's living holy and obediently to God, I'm a former sinner, currently a saint. So I'm only taking questions from sinners. You have to actually listen to the answer. Uh, it has to be of at least a high school caliber level quality or higher. And uh, if you swear, you get put in timeout for 10 minutes.
All right, what is your okay, question? Okay, I got a question. Are you, ready? Are you a okay. sinner? Are you a sinner? Oh, oh yes, I'm a sinner. Okay, good. I can take okay, your question. So got a question. Yes, so, thank you. My parents grew up Catholic, very religious people. I, however, was not deemed Catholic. I grew up as an independent Christian. So here's my question. Are you ready? My question is, God loves everybody. So why are you the? So why do you have the ability to judge a life that you cannot change, such as myself? Okay. Well, I haven't judged you. I don't know anything about but you. But you said I was a sinner. No. I asked you if you were a sinner, and you right. said yes. And I said yes. So by doing that, you therefore have been able to answer my question because I am a sinner. So why do you have the ability to say, okay, you're wrong for this reason, and I'm judging you for this reason? So I can answer your question. Well, what is your sin? What is your? What is the sin that you're guilty I'm of? No, being human's not a sin. Being human and away from God is a sin. Being well, what, what's the what's the what's the what's, the, what's one of the sins that that you're guilty of? If you say you're a sinner, there has to be some specific sins. Okay, I don't know. Drunkenness, fornication, something um, like that. Well, Lying. Just, I have a jewel. I don't know if that matters. You have a what? I have a jewel. A jewel? Okay, well, okay. So I have another question. It's like a nickel. All right, wait. I didn't even. What? All right. So, so why am I why am I allowed to judge? We're commanded to judge. No. Christians are commanded to judge. Now, only God can condemn. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. I don't have any stones. I have a, a pole and a camera in my hand. I don't have any stones. They were gonna. So uh, Jesus told his disciples in John 7:24, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. Right. First Corinthians 2:15. First Corinthians 2:15 says. Uh, first Corinthians 2:15 says, a uh, spiritual man judgeth all things, but he himself is rightly judged of no man. Uh, we're commanded to judge. Now, we can't judge hypocritically. Like if I was out here drunk and, and a fornicator and telling drunkards and fornicators they're on their way to hell, my penalty is I'm judged but under that same. Equal, so no, not, no, the, the Bible never says that all sin is equal. Oh, yes, it so, is. Uh, so we're commanded to judge. Now, okay, uh, no, you have to be living holy. I have no unrepented of sin on my record at this moment, so I'm living holy and obediently. I see your hand. Uh, so uh, so uh, we're commanded to judge. Now, if I, were to, uh, if I were to sin today and I haven't repented of it, then I need to go and repent of that sin before I'm, uh, I'm, I can righteously judge anyone. So you because I have know. sin on my record. All right, she's next. Okay, so the Bible also says, Judge not, lest thou be judged. Right, that's Matthew 7, so, 1. Do you have a question? So We're not taking statements, only questions. Judging, why are you judging people? Like just a minute ago, that's what you she just asked. Girl, you said, if you're pregnant, then you're a whore. No, I never said if you're pregnant. I said if you've had an abortion, you're a baby-killing whore. If any girl... That doesn't make you a whore? Yeah, if you've had... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're, okay. you're, you're sleeping around, you're sleeping around, and killing babies. Well, I take it back. If you're married, if you're married, then you're a married, then you're a married murderer. You're a murderer of marriage. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I think she was here longer than you. All right. What is your? And ask me a question. And are you a sinner? Yes. Okay. I can take your question. Okay. <laughs> In regards to you saying that all of you are before you are baby killing forces, that you have to repent of your sins, have you repented before you've been calling women baby killing forces? Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with that. A whore, a whore is a, a word in the Bible, and actually, that's also that's a man, a, a person who goes after whores. That's the that's the up the opposite side of it. A, a girl who is sleeping around outside of marriage, uh, the Bible calls a whore. Now, a prostitute is actually is actually a, a better a higher level is above the whore because a prostitute at least places enough value on her body to charge something for it. But uh, a lot of college girls give it away for you free. Charge people for this message? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't charge. I don't charge anything. See, that's why we can tell you the truth because we're not inviting you to a church and we're not passing around a collection plate. So we can tell you both the goodness and the severity of God. All right, what is your question? You're saying that women who get abortions are baby killing whores. Yes. What about women who have been raped and did not choose to have sex? Uh, well, what did the baby do to deserve to die in that scenario? They are the offspring of their attacker and rapist. Well, why should the baby die? Kill the, the kill the rapist. I'm yet. all for I'm all for killing rapists. I am all for killing rapists. I say kill the rapist. K kill the rapist. Yes, kill the rapist. Let the baby live. The baby does, didn't do anything to deserve to die. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You're they, we're not living we're not living in the medieval times in the dark ages where you don't know what's in that big lump inside of a woman's body. You know through ultra ultrasounds and like 3D 
40 ultrasounds and all. What is inside that baby? And when it has a functioning heartbeat? No, it has, it has a functioning heartbeat at 21 days. That's like three weeks. So basically, pretty much before, before most girls even realize that they've skipped their period, there's already a beating heart. It's a human being. Don't, it, I don't care if, uh, you, if you were raped. That's a horrible, horrible thing. Kill the rapist. Let the baby live. Uh, all right. I mean, yeah, but like, those, okay, since those laws were created in, like, in that time with Judeo-Christian values, we don't really see those laws as part of the Bible anymore as a lot of people in the 1700s and 1800s did. So a lot of people, a lot of atheist people who were raised as atheists based their morals off of the law code, which was in turn based off of the Christian value. That affirms the, uh, the absolute. Everyone, you don't even need a Bible to know songs to kill. You, it's in your project. You know that. So that, that, that indicates more that uh, the morality is absolute, not religious. But uh, if you want you have to have the Bible, not conscious. I want to buy you your flag. Uh, now, if you want to, contain, uh, to maintain I know you need the money. Relative, the How much do you want for your flag? Is, I like not killing you. I think uh, it's not killing you. Like it's for me. But it's the same as trying to argue that the blue shirt is better than the yellow shirt. If it's all subjective Excuse me. in opinion, uh, then you can't claim one. And that's why we can Scientific! Scientific! Who wrote the genetic code? I you guys are in a fairy tale land where nothing exploded and created everything. I can't believe that big bunch of fairy tales. No! No! You probably believe in aliens. Here's the mantra of the atheists. There's no proof of God. Now help me look for an alien. Here's the mantra of the atheist. God doesn't exist, and I really, really hate him. I understand God doesn't exist. I mean, how can you say air? That's kind of like not logical. Okay, how many people say God loves everybody? What does he think about I mean, okay, what do you have to say to these atheists? What about gay frog? He loves you. <laughs> what do you have to say to the uh, person that believes God loves everyone? I'm glad she has such a support. I believe. She's That's wonderful. Is she wrong? Is she wrong? Is she wrong? Is she wrong? Do not say it. Wait a minute. She has to be, if there's no God, she has to be wrong. I think she's wrong. Now look at how they crumble. Look at how they crumble on themselves. It's okay. Because she's not, because she's not judging them. Because she doesn't have a banner. Because she doesn't have a banner. <laughs> Such cowards when it comes to confronting anyone else. Hey, I have to watch this. I didn't do this. Oh, yeah! Right. Question. Didn't Jesus die on the cross for all of our sins to be forgiven, no matter what we do? Yeah, and you need to receive that gift. You need to cry out to him for mercy. You need to stop it. See, Jesus, see, do you believe, do you believe every single person is going to go to heaven? I don't believe that. Wait, wait, so God's God's yes or no, do you believe every person is going to heaven? So God's love is conditional. With, with, probably with the exception of the two of us, right? Yeah. No, well, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus, Jesus actually tells us that most people will end up in hell. Do you know that Jesus tells us most people will end up in hell? Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many go that way. But narrow is the path, uh, straight is the gate that leads to everlasting life, and few there be that find it. So, God does have a benevolent love for all of his creation, but it's his forgiveness that you better worry about. God's love is not up for debate here today, folks. God's love is not what's up for debate here today. It's God's forgiveness. And very few people have God's forgiveness upon them. The Bible says, call upon the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked, this is a condition, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and return to the Lord for he is rich in mercy and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. God's forgiveness is conditional. Uh, Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people 
which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Humble themselves. That's a condition. And pray. That's a condition. And seek my face. That's a condition. And here's the hard one. And turn from their wicked ways. That's a condition. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. All right.